<laughs> All right, it is time for the 2021 GoPro Accessories Guide. You have either purchased the Hero 10 or you have the Hero 9 or 8 or, or any action camera and you're wondering, what accessories do I need? What should I buy for my camera? What's actually going to help me? There's a million options out there. I've, I've gone through most of them and this is the kit that I've ended up with. This is the kit that through all the years has passed the test and stays in my bag. Things that I actually use on the regular and things that you probably should also. I already made a video all about the GoPro Hero 10. So if you haven't seen that, click up there. And then also I made a video on the GoPro Hero 10 overheating. I know a lot of people were talking about the overheating issue. Click there for my video where I fully tested this thing out and found that people were testing it wrong and so was I. But today we are talking GoPro accessories. But again, it's, it's just kind of action camera accessories because most every other action camera has adopted those little feet from GoPro. So almost all of these accessories work with whatever action camera you are currently using. But we are gonna focus specifically on the Hero 10. And because because I've got so many things on this table, I've divided this video into chapters, so use the chapters along the bottom of the screen to jump to whatever section that, that you wanna hear about, but yeah, there's a lot to talk about today. And I'm not saying that you should buy every one of these things, I'm just saying that these are the things that I use and hopefully by going through them all, you'll see options of things that are actually good and you'll find one and go, hey, I, I could really use that, that would be helpful for whatever use case you have. I just in general, I hope this video helps you guys out, hit the like button if it does, and a massive thank you to the sponsor of today's video, which happens to also be my very favorite mount because it's not really a mount as much as it is a, well it is a mount, but it's a mount that makes all of my other mounts into magnetic mounts and that is snap mount this thing right there see that thing that turns all of my other mounts into magnetic mounts we'll talk about them more in a little bit here but they are they're sponsoring today's video and i really appreciate them because well before they were a sponsor i was a huge fan of snap mounts and it's rad to hear so many of you that have got snap mounts and, and have hit me up and been like these are amazing that is it's one of my favorite things. It's one of my favorite things when I recommend something and then people are like, dude, I got it. It's awesome, thank you. That's like, that's what I look for in a product and absolutely what I look for in someone that's gonna sponsor a video on this channel. So thank you, Snap Mounts. And again, we'll talk more about them when we get to them. All right, you have a GoPro, you have an action camera. The very first thing you need are SD cards. And there is one brand of SD card, one particular SD card that I always get, that I always trust. And they are the SanDisk Extreme 128 gigabytes and they are V30s. That is super important for action cameras. You do not want to go with a cheap card for your, your expensive action. These things are recording at very high resolutions and very high frame rates now. You need an SD card that can keep up. These have never failed me. I don't even try any of the brands because they've just been good to me. And when an SD card is good to you, stick with it. I've got a ton of these things, but I would say the normal user should pick up probably two or three 128 gigabyte SD cards. If you go out for a full day of filming, you'll probably go through two of them, but having a third is, is probably wise. Uh, next up from there with the GoPro is the GoPro Hero 10 battery. You're gonna need to get batteries. Now this thing's battery life is different in different resolutions, in different frame rates. Again, go check the overheating video for a bunch of testing with that kind of thing. But in general, I would say the normal person probably needs needs their main battery that's inside the camera plus at least two extra spare battery. Maybe pick up a fourth just in case. Then also there's a bunch of third party batteries like, like other brands that are making GoPro's batteries. I do not recommend them. The thing is these have kind of become cheap enough to the point where to get four of them, to get three or four of them, it's not that expensive. And you know they're they're gonna work. So yeah, probably not a good spot to, to save money. Next up from there to charge your batteries. This is super important because if you do not get a battery charger, an external battery charger and you are charging your batteries inside your GoPro. The GoPro just comes with a camera and a cable to charge inside the camera, which means that while you're charging your battery, you can't be using the camera. But you pick up one of these bad boys and through USB-C, you can be charging two batteries either in your car or back at the hotel while you're using your GoPro. Very important to, to charge batteries externally so you're not, you're not using up the GoPro while you're charging your battery. Next up from there, which is, is super dope that the Hero 10 is exactly 
exactly the same size as the Hero 9 because I still have some GoPro Hero 9 screen protectors for the Hero 9 that fit the Hero 10 perfectly because nothing physically changed. So I put a screen protector on the back and a screen protector on the front to make sure that I don't scratch my GoPro because a lot of times I, I usually end up just kind of chucking this in my bag. Some people are great and they put cases on their camera. I, I don't usually do that. So get, get a screen protector. Next up in the basics category is a thumb screw. And, and this sounds like, why, why would you need a thumb screw? GoPros come with thumb screws, but thumb screw that GoPro comes with this thing, it is terrible. It is the worst possible design for a thumb. Maybe it's not the worst possible design, but it's bad. And the reason it's bad is because when you put this screw in there, it's metal on metal. So if any temperature change happens, like you jump into colder water or, or it's cold and you jump into warm water or you go snowboarding, now it's cold, the metal, it changes size, it seizes up. It's super hard to unlock a GoPro if any temperature change has happened. But these guys with that big fatty, it's called a high torque thumb screw. These high torque thumb screws, even when they're in there and this thing is cranked super, super hard, there's plenty of leverage to be able to actually unscrew them. Whereas the normal GoPro thumb screw, if it's cranked in there super hard, it's like your fingers are slipping and you're like trying to, you're like, come on. Or if you have gloves on, forget it. You're not unscrewing that thing if you have gloves on. So as simple as this thing might be, this this might be the most important of all these accessories to, to pick up for your GoPro. Next up from there, there is a, another useful bit, like super useful actually. This is a GoPro feet to quarter 20 mount. So what this guy does is it takes any quarter 20 mount and it turns it into a GoPro mount. So a tripod stick like this thing that has a quarter 20 on the end, I just screw this bad boy on there and now I've turned this into, into a GoPro mount. Just like that. So super simple. I keep a ton of these in my bag. I probably have like six or seven of these things. I would say most people probably need like two or three of them. Next up is another simple little piece, but this guy here by Ulanzi, I don't know what it's called, but I will link it in the description below. It is a battery door replacement. So what this thing does is it replaces the battery door that's on the GoPro because what's under the battery door, but the USB-C charging port. So if you want to charge your GoPro while running it, you either leave the door open like this and you just have your cable going through there or pop this guy on there as your battery door and now check that out now you can charge through the door while your battery is being held in place because there's a door on it and then they also give you a, a cold shoe mount on the side here so you could mount the microphone or you can mount something else there also it does render your gopro no longer waterproof though so if you're using this don't don't jump in the water <laughs> And then the very last thing in the basics category is a case. Now, GoPros now come with a case. And for most people, I think this is plenty. Honestly, I, I do have plenty of cases that I would recommend if you need something bigger. But I would say for most people having a case like this, you can fit the GoPro in there and then a bunch of other accessories. And then there's a thing up here and this is free. If you bought a GoPro, it came with this case. So yeah, save save your case money for something else. And that is it for the basics category. Those are the basic things that I think almost everyone needs for their GoPro. And uh, yeah, that's the basics category. Next up is mounts. And again, the very first one is snap mounts. And like I said at the very beginning, snap mounts is a mount that goes onto your GoPro. This is the main piece you can still see. You can still see the screen behind it when you have it in that kind of folded up position. And then when you want to fold it down, you can use this just to like stand up your GoPro if you're just trying to like stand it up on top of something or you can magnet this to something. A lot of times what I do is I fold it up like this and then I magnet it to the side of my van. So now I basically have a tripod anytime I'm near my van or any other metallic surface. And that's great. But what's even cooler is all of these other mounts. And this bit goes on on any mount that you want. So this is already on a lot of my mounts. You'll see it as I go through here. This piece is on a bunch of my mounts. So I can just swap it between mounts really easily and magnetically. And it's like, I mean, it's like super secure. Like, look, the ball head bent before the snap mount fell off. I hold it like this. Like if you're doing more than this with your snap mount, uh, then, then I don't know, don't use snap mount. But if I mean like that, come on. That is super secure. And when you're ready to get it off, you just kind of pop it off. They're they're my favorite because they've made all of my other mounts better. And I, I appreciate that snap mount. Then the next mount that, that I use with snap mounts as well is my windshield mount. Now, this is a very intense suction cup mount. I made a whole video on this mount. It's called the Sea Sucker Mount. You can see how, how big it is. I think it's a four inch 
four inch diameter, I think is what it is. But this basically suction cups up into my windshield. It then has a ram mount double ball head on here. So this is mounted in my windshield. Then I can position my GoPro wherever I want. And with one knob, screw that tight. It locks both balls at the same time. And then I just take my GoPro and snap it into place. Now we're filming something as we drive along, as I go along the road. And then again, because it's snap mounts when I'm ready to leave, I just pop it off and throw it on something else. But this suction cup is, it's kind of the only one that I'm gonna trust with my GoPro anymore. Like if I'm mounting my GoPro on the outside of my vehicle, like I want like a cool tire shot or anything like that, this is the only suction cup that I will trust pretty much from now on. I've had other suction cups, I've tried them all. Trust me, this is the one that you want. It's big, 100%, but you actually pump this thing into place and it's so strong that people mount bicycles from the back of their car, like on the rear windshield of their car, Sea Sucker makes these as bike mounts. So they're gonna hold your GoPro, no problem. Next up from there is a side-by-side -side mount that you guys ask about a lot because when I do comparison videos, this is what I use. I put one camera in this side, one camera in this side, run thumb screws in there, and then it mounts to any of my other mounts. Another very useful mount and my favorite mount of of all time is the GoPro bite mount. Now this one is from GoPro and it's it's kind of more one that you can walk around with that you can use really simply but it does require a little more energy from your jaw to hold it in place. So we throw the GoPro on there and then I just put it like this and now I'm holding my GoPro and wherever I look my GoPro looks but when I need to get another shot I just grab it and then I can film something else or I can turn it around and I can film myself and then when I want to go back to POV mode I just do this and then back to riding a bike or jet ski or whatever you're doing bite mount. You guys make fun of me relentlessly for this mount. <laughs> and then the other version of that same idea, the same concept, the bite mount concept is this one. And this is by GoPole and it's more like a scuba, like a snorkel bite mount piece. And this is the one that I use if I'm going to the water. If I'm going to go out surfing or something like that where I could lose my GoPro, it could sink to the bottom of the ocean. This is the mount I use because it's much more secure. Like there's more lip action. There's more like you're biting further back here. So it's easier to hold in your, in your teeth but it's the same concept where I can use this while surfing. You can't hear me. While surfing, I use this, I paddle out. So you're getting this like POV shot. And then once I'm up on a wave, I can pop it off and I can turn it around. Or if my buddy's doing something, I can pull it out of my mouth and I can film my buddy in my hand. And then when I'm going back to surfing, I just put it up on my mouth. <laughs> Uh, next up for that is the Dango mount. And this is a, a motorcycle helmet mount or like mountain bike helmet mount. That's how I use it. And I use it on this guy. So a lot of people have, a lot of people have helmets like this where there's kind of nowhere to like put an adhesive mount. Like other helmets have. See on my motorcycle helmet here, there's like this whole flat piece at the jaw portion. So I was able to actually just put like a normal GoPro sticky mount on there and then just put a normal GoPro mount on there. So I didn't need anything extra, but a lot of people have like, airflow ventilation going on on their helmets, especially motocross helmets, and like this, a mountain biking helmet. For those people, there is this guy, and it is it is a surprisingly strong clamp mount, and then you put it up in here, and then boom, it's clamp, hang on. So you get the GoPro just mounted on it like that, and then you just kinda squeeze it like that, and bam, you are, uh, you're filming with your GoPro on your mountain bike or your motorcycle or whatever it is. And I'm telling you, this thing is so strong. I don't care what you're doing on your motorcycle. This is not coming off. And then there's a, a push button. Like this whole thing is like a, like this whole thing is like a spring and you can push it in and then you can actually turn it to different spots. So I could put it upside down if I wanted like a, a little bit lower of an angle. Like I wanted to see more of your handlebars kind of thing. I just leave it in the normal upright mode because I think this is the best angle that you can get on a uh, anything. Anything I think right by your mouth is like the best POV shot. Of course, except for the GoPro head mount. Now, the head mount is one of my favorites. This is a very old version, but it's just because it's lasted through the years and I haven't needed to buy the new version. But the head mount is, is honestly probably the most, it's like the closest to what your eyes are seeing because when you put it on here, I don't know, it's like just above your eye. Like it's not far above your, I guess that's like the same, like the bite mount and the head mount are probably equally close to your eyeballs. And this is a great mount because again, wherever I look is where it's gonna go. So if I'm doing something where I'm not wearing a helmet, this is a great mount to give you that POV look so that wherever I look or whatever I'm doing, it views it. Now, the thing is about this though, is the transition between POV mode and then holding it yourself is, is rough. Like you definitely can't do it in one shot because you're gonna go like this 
And then you're gonna be like, okay, hey, here we are. We're doing this. And then when I wanna go back to POV mount, I gotta get it strapped back on like that. But for things where we're gonna be hiking for like 15 minutes or longer, I definitely don't want to try to bite mount for like half an hour. It, your mouth gets very tired. So this gives you the, the same POV style, but something that, that's kind of more, not permanent, but like you're gonna put on, you're gonna keep it like this, and you're gonna walk around and do an activity. And then also with the kind of keeping the GoPro mount family is the chesty. And again, this is the old version because I rarely use the chesty. I, I hardly ever, I would say, use the chesty. But if you're a mountain biker, if you're doing anything where having the camera like shoot low, like, like that low shot between the bars, that's always on a chesty. A lot of mountain bikers run the chesty because you are, you're, you're seeing the handles in the shot. So as they're riding through the forest and like the handlebars are doing this and everything, the GoPro is right here getting that shot. So if you are a mountain biker, I would I would check out the, the Dango mount, this guy, and get that chin mount look which is kind of like the, the POV version for mountain bikers so that where you look, the camera looks, or get the chest mount if you want to see more of the handlebars in the shot. For my money though, and, and what I like, I almost always use this mount for mountain biking. Okay, that is it for, for mounts. Let's jump on to tripods and grips. I made a video recently about tripods and grips, so a lot of this will look familiar if you've recently watched that video, but if you, if you haven't, then it's new to you. Get this thing back on the snap mount because the first tripod up here is, it's the one that I use almost always as I use it every day. This is the Ulanzi MT-16. I think it's like 25 bucks and it's better than tripods that are a lot more expensive. And the main reason is, is yes, it's, it's a great grip. It does extend. You can kind of do one of these things, but the main thing that makes this the best grip that's out there right now that I use, it has a small ball head on here. So I can actually undo this piece and I can turn the camera in all different directions. So if the surface is uneven and my camera's like this and I'm like, ah, oh, I have a crooked shot. I just use the, the ball head and I straighten out my shot. A lot of tripods, you'd be surprised, don't have that feature. It doesn't come with the, the tripod mount thing though, so you do need one of these little guys, a tripod two quarter 20 mount for that. And then I will pop that off there because I also use that same tripod mount with this guy, which is the Insta360 Invisible Selfie Stick. I use this for lots of stuff. Now, primarily it's for my 360 cameras, but, but again, this very small stick, I just twist the tip of it and then Oh, bam, it's like 40 something inches, which is super long for a pole that I can then just go boom, and it slips into my backpack and takes up hardly any space. And then when I'm using it with the GoPro, I just use the same tripod adapter. I screw that bit on there and boom, I have a short handle that I can just kind of tilt in like this, or I can extend it out a little bit, tilt it in like this and boom, very small, very compact, but I can get super, super long. If I'm just traveling with this stick, I bring in the Manfrotto Pixie. I screw this onto the bottom because the bottom has a quarter of 20 and then boom, this thing turns into a, a little tripod also. Very sweet setup. Then over from there is the New Bear Floating Grip. Made a whole video on this guy as well, but this is a floating grip. So anytime we're gonna go in the water, anytime we're gonna go, maybe I'm like wake surfing behind a boat or even if we're just gonna go out in the ocean or something like that, I'm gonna bring this because one, it's a great grip. Let me pop this on there. So just like that, this thing's an awesome grip. Same thing, I can just tilt it down. Same thing, it turns left and extends out. I have a great little grip. But the main thing about this one is that this piece, this whole piece is a bobber or is a float. So if I was to drop this in the water, it flips upside down and it floats so I can see that little red tip popping out of the water. And then also the whole grip piece, the whole floaty bob piece is also a, a tripod. Then in that same realm of, of kind of hey, we're gonna go in the water and I don't wanna sink my GoPro, is a, a smaller, non-extendable version of, of that same thing. And this one is by GoPole, but there are a bunch of them on Amazon that are way cheaper than this one. And I would say it doesn't really matter at this point what you get. You can get one of the cheap ones. It's just a grip that floats. Next up in the, the grips and tripod is this guy, which is, it's just a little gorilla pod. So same thing, we need one of these little tripod to GoPro mounts. We slap that guy on there but the main the main thing with the gorilla pods with any of the gorilla pods is that you can mount them to really weird places so if there was just like a pole sitting there you can just like wrap this thing around 
a pole wrapped around a, you can just put it in really weird spots because the legs do the bendy thing. Like, you know, you know, you've seen like all the vloggers walk around with this thing. It's just like that, but really small and for small cameras like your GoPro. Stealing the adapter off of that one and going to the next also Joby one. This is also a tripod, this little teeny tiny thing. Also a tripod. This is the Joby micro tripod or something. I'll put the link in the description. We pop that bad boy on there. The legs spread out like that. Check that thing out. That's a little teeny tiny tripod with a, a movable ball head. Hang on. All right, check that out. That is a, a tripod with a movable ball head. So even if you're on an uneven surface, you can, you can still get your shot. And this actually comes with us everywhere. But the main reason it comes with us everywhere, whoa, is that it comes with a phone mount. Fold it up. This is the, the phone mount and tripod. And then the whole thing just kind of pops open. Cell phone, I pop my cell phone in here. And now I can use it as a cell phone tripod, but usually we use it on the airplane so I can watch movies on my phone. <laughs> Next up from there is, is an incredibly useful mount that again, I this is one of those that, that I would say probably everyone should get. This is, this is one of the more usable mounts, one of the more, uh, holy cow, I can put my GoPro anywhere kind of mounts. Also, do you see how much of a pain in the butt it is to have to unthumb screw things all the, I wish I had snap mounts on every one of my mounts. I just don't have enough snap mounts for that. But this guy right here is the small rig magic arm with clamp. So this thing is one little dial here that controls both this elbow bend here, whoa, and both ball joints here. So you bend it and put it in whatever spot you want. You clamp this onto something. And then once you have the GoPro just in the right spot like that, you're like, oh, that's perfect. Then you twist this knob and boom, all three joints are now locked in place. So for instance, even just like the edge of my desk here, it's all metal. This is like a serious rig kind of thing. As soon as I have it where I want it, I turn one knob and the entire thing is like, oh, it's like locked in. Look how. You gotta crank that thing. So super strong mount and and this is, it's probably one of my more useful mounts. It's, it's the mount where if you see the shot on this channel ever with a GoPro or action camera and you're like, how did he get it in that spot? It's probably this mount. And then lastly, because so many people have asked me about it, so I, I included it on this list, but I will say I do not use this grip tripod, but lots of people do because the new one has been updated. This is the new GoPro three-way mount and you unhook this piece, unhook this piece, and it kind of does this like Z tripod -y thing, like fo it folds in like three pieces. So you can get it out like that and I can film myself like that, very good. And an update that they did before, like the tripod came out of the bottom, but now the bottom is a tripod. So you just pull these two feet out and now this becomes a tripod. That is very clever that they changed. And then this top piece is a ball head. So I undo this little latch and then the GoPro has a ball. It's plastic on plastic though, so it's not, it's not a great ball head. It's just that it it does work as a ball head. So, so props to GoPro for listening. It is better than the old one, but I would still say if I had my choice between this and this guy, this is like half the price and I think better than this guy. But I had to mention it because so many people ask me about this grip in particular. Moving into our very last section, which is like, just extras, some fun stuff and some just extras. One, the very first one is the Max Lens Mod by GoPro. It is really good. If you have a GoPro Hero 9 or 10, it's compatible with both of these. Look at that lens on there. I made a whole video about the Hero 9 with the Max Lens Mod, click there. But it is, it is really good. It's a little expensive considering that you just spent 500 bucks on this and I think this is like 100 bucks just for the lens. So you're at like 600 bucks for this setup, but you do open up some really cool new capabilities for the GoPro. But it is definitely something that I keep in my bag at all times if we're gonna use a GoPro and uh, yeah, I, I would recommend. Next up from there is the media mod. Now, very cool is the media mod from the Hero 9. Still fits the Hero 10 because it didn't change anything. So now this whole unit is a little larger, yes, but it's got a new microphone that's on the front there. You now have a cold shoe up top so you can mount a microphone or you can mount a light. You have a cold shoe on the side for a mic or a light. But what's the most important, it popped these little doors open. And most importantly with this is you now have a USB-C port that's on the outside here and you have a mic input 
port, which remember we used to have that like big dongle piece that would plug into the USB-C and they would just kind of hang and you would plug a microphone into that. Now they have this set up so that this is essentially your audio adapter now. It's a much better option than the old audio adapter dangle, dongle, dingle, dongle. But yeah, it's still, still kind of annoying that you have to buy this extra piece just to get an audio adapter. I wish the GoPro would just have a mic input on it. Does a mic input take up so much space on action cameras that they can't just put them on there? It's very weird to me. But once you have that on there, you can take something like the Rode Video Micro and we can slap this guy on top. The uh, the fuzzy bit will be in your shot if it's like this. So you probably have to pop that off. And then like this, it is not in your shot. And bingo bango, you now have like a really, a really solid vlogging rig. Like this rig alone right here, this is a very good little rig to go vlog on. Very, very impressive audio and great video because of the Hero 10. And I like the Rode Video Micro a whole lot. It's kind of the one that I've always used, but then I recently have used the DDD4 Duo, also a really good mic. So I would say you can't go wrong with either of these mic setups. The DDD4 Duo has a few extra features. It's a little more expensive as well, but uh, I would say if you just need like a microphone to to just go out and start filming with this thing, get the Rode Video Micro. Then next up from there, if you have good audio for your video, you have really good video because of the hero, but you want that video to look a little more cinematic. One of the ways you can get that is using ND filters. With ND filters, if you, if you know about ND filters and you know why you would want ND filters, click right there if you don't know about ND filters, but these little guys from Polar Pro are the most impressive little ND filters for an action camera that that I've ever, like the quality is the same for their big cameras as it is for, for a GoPro, which is important because if you're putting this over your lens, this is what I say about all filters, don't skimp on filters. This is the window in which your camera sees the world. So if your window is low quality or poor, then the world looks poor. You've reduced the quality of your image. If you're gonna put a filter on there, make sure it is a high quality filter and uh, Polar Pro makes kind of the best. Check this rig out now. This is like becoming a pretty dope little rig. All right, last two things. This one right here, very important. This is the, the new and improved floaty for the GoPro. Remember the floaties, they used to just stick to the back before there was even a screen. You would just stick it to the back and it was small. But now look how, this thing's a honker. It's a big, like, hang on, let me get it in here and you'll see. So now the GoPro is, is big but now the GoPro floats. So if you're going in the ocean, if you're going in the lake, GoPros sink. If you don't know that, then, then you haven't lost your GoPro in the ocean before. I've lost many GoPros in oceans and lakes because I didn't have a floaty attached to them or some kind of floating grip. I was just being brave and then I dropped it. I lost many, many a GoPro. I think I'm up to like six or seven at this point. And then the very last thing, and I, I do use this a lot because we'll go swimming or diving or snorkeling or anything like that. And, and you know, you want to bring a GoPro along and holding a GoPro again, it just means that now your hands are taken up by the GoPro. You're worried about dropping it. All of that comes into play. So, so there is a POV GoPro mount and it's pretty great. It is this guy right here. It is the Octo mask with built in GoPro attachment mount right on top of the mask. Now the mask itself is actually really high quality. As far as a dive mask goes, as far as a, a snorkel mask goes, it's it's really good. Now you can't use a high torque thumb screw on here. So you gotta gotta bring like a screwdriver with you if you're gonna be using this guy. But you pop this on there, you pop this, wait, should I just try to feel for it or should I take off the mask and do it? Come on, I feel like I could do this. Get it, oh, I thought that was it. Am I even close? Where is this thing? I got it, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> so because you don't have a, a high torque thumb screw, I bring a little screwdriver every time we use this thing because I want to really tighten this thing down. And then and then wherever you look now while you're snorkeling, you you have a GoPro. I just fogged it up. This thing is pretty good without fogging up underwater, but above water when I go like that. <laughs> Not a, exactly an accessory that a lot of people need, but if you are gonna go snorkel with yours, uh, the Octo mask is the best I found. I had one before that was like a mount. You mounted it onto whatever dive mask you had. It was terrible and the GoPro came off and I had to swim down to go get it because it didn't stay on. This one's like actually part of the mask. So you're, you're definitely not gonna lose your GoPro with this one. Okay, that is... <sighs> That is all of the GoPro accessories and mounts and tripods. Hang on. That, that I think you you probably need or should have if you're rocking an action camera. 
Let me know what you guys think though. Do you guys have any of these mounts? Have you used them? If you've had an issue with one of these mounts, like let me know below because I, I wanna know about it. I'm always trying to get you guys the very best mounts that are out there. This is everything that I've tested, that I've tried, and that's uh, that stayed in my bag. I hope this helped you guys out. Comment below, let me know uh, if this did help you out. And I will see you uh, soon. I think it's everything. It's gotta be everything. I don't know. If there's anything else, I'll update you guys later. I can't go outside, but I gotta make a video. Come here, do you wanna see the camera? Come here, come here. Look, look, there you are. Do you see it? Yeah. Well, you have a very dirty face right now. What happened to your face? What did you eat? I eat muffin. You ate a muffin? <laughs> I like you. Ah! Mm. I just want you to, Bob, but I gotta make a video. I love you. Break my heart.